एक बेनती तो जरूर करना है शांति रखियो ते तैयारी भी रखो Today in this video we will talk about an armed offensive launched inside a religious complex that was met with as disbelief and as dismay. Today we will talk about the inglorious chapter in the history of modern India that is perhaps indelible and unforgiven even after 38 years. This week is the 38th anniversary of the incident that has gone down in India's history in infamy. Today we will talk about Operation Blue Star an event that left behind crumbs of polarization, alienation and large scale hatred. Operation Blue Star was the name given to the operation launched in the first week of June of 1984 by the Indian Army to flush out six secessionists who were holed up in the Akal Takht in the Golden Temple in Amritsar. It was a two-fold operation. The first one was called Operation Metal which was restricted to eliminate the armed militants from the golden temple complex this was followed by operation shop which was carried out across punjab to ensure that all the suspects were captured and killed but in order to understand the events that culminated in operation blue star it is essential to understand what is khalistan movement who was bhindrewala and the other factors that led to this operation so let's discuss them one by one first the khalistan movement the word khalistan means land of the pure and where is this pure land the land historically identified as punjab now ideally for khalistan movement supporters it encompasses punjab province of pakistan india haryana and himachal pradesh so khalistan is a sikh separatist movement that seeks to establish independent nation for the six named khalistan now when partition was in the offing there was demand from few sikh leaders for six to have their own country on the lines of pakistan now other leaders during this period convinced them that this demand was not valid but when India was partitioned Punjab was divided between India and Pakistan and the ensuing bloodshed riots and migration from East Punjab to West Punjab and vice versa made Sikh leaders think that they had suffered a lot more than other parts of the country after partition there was a demand again by the Sikhs to have a sikh majority state for themselves but it was outrightly rejected by the state reorganization commission in 1956 it was in the year 1956 that several new states were formed in india now tussles over irrigation resources and water disputes gave rise to further demands of autonomy in the state this time akali leaders played cleverly and placed their demands based on language and not on religion as states in india were being formed on the linguistic basis and not on religious basis so instead of saying six should have a different state they demanded that the punjabi speaking people should also have a separate state like telugu speaking people and others Punjab was finally made a separate state on linguistic basis on the 1st of November in 1966 in which six were in majority in terms of religious share of the population another factor that gave flip to khalistani demand was a large scale diaspora in UK USA and Canada Now Khalistani leaders like Jagjit Singh Chauhan urged the diaspora to donate money to their cause 
and the Khalistanis even declared the formation of Khalistan as a new nation in a New York Times ad in 1971 and released a new currency abroad in 1980. However, it is crucial to highlight here that not all Akali leaders were in favor of a separate nation. Although they were not a lot, they enjoyed a considerable amount of influence over the masses. In official records and documents, Akali leaders never vowed for a separate country but only demanded more autonomy. Now comes the phase of Khalistan moment when Bhindrewale emerged as its de jure and de facto leader. His full name is Jarnail Singh Bhindrewale and he was the head of the Damdami Taksal, a religious site of learning near Amritsar. In 1977, he started as a saint but ended up as a soldier. Wherever he went, he was surrounded by his followers armed with AK-47. So, he was also referred as Saint Soldier. He first rose to prominence in 1978 after clashes between the Orthodox Sikhs and the Nirankaris. The Nirankaris differ from the Orthodox Sikhs as their belief that Guru Granth Sahib is not the final Guru of the Sikhs. A human being can also be the 11th Sikh Guru. Bhindrewale accused the Nirankaris of sacrilege and in the ensuing clashes, several Nirankaris died and Bhindrewale emerged on the horizon. In the election held after the emergency in India, Indira Gandhi lost and Janta Dal came to power, while in Punjab, the Akali Dal won. At this stage, Congress began looking for charismatic Sikh leaders who would rally with them to bring them back to the corridor of power. Someone who exerts huge influence on the common people. It was Gyani Jail Singh who actually suggested Sanjay Gandhi, the younger son of Indira Gandhi, to talk to Bhindrewala to counter Akali Dal's sway over the Punjab politics and Sikh shrines. The main reason of Bhindrewale's rise was this suggestion offered by Gyani Jail Singh. In the 1980 elections, Congress stormed back to power and one year later, that is, in 1981, census started. The issue of language in Punjab once again became a flashpoint. The editor of the newspaper Punjab Kesri, Lala Jagat Narayan, was murdered as he was rallying Hindus to mention Hindi as their mother tongue, while Bhindrewale and Akali Dal wanted every resident of the state to mention Punjabi as their mother tongue in the census. Bhindrewale gained a cult following after this. The stage was now set for the burning of Punjab. Radical separatist Bhindrewala had started laying the groundwork for his demand in 1982. And by the mid-1983, he managed to gain support for his plan to divide India. His operation and plan were reportedly supported by Pakistan's ISI, which helped him in spreading militancy in the state and also provide him with arms and ammunition. In April of 1983, Punjab DIG A.S. Atwal was killed on the steps of Golden Temple by the followers of Bhindrewale and no police officer even dared to go inside the temple to retrieve his body for over two hours. By now, many of Bhindrewale's supporters were living inside the Golden Temple and they were armed with sophisticated weapons 24 by 7. Things worsened when Hindu passengers were shot dead by AK-47s in a bus in Dilwan in Punjab and after this, Article 356, that is President Rule, was imposed in Punjab. But this did not 
stop the selective killing of Hindus. The backdrop of Operation Blue Star was now getting ready. Militants had started gathering arms and ammunition inside the Golden Temple even before DIG AS Atwal was murdered and on 15th of December 1983, Bhindrewale along with his followers took control of the Akal Takht of the Golden Temple. At this point, the Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi decided to negotiate and send a proposal for the talks to Akali the leaders and Bhindre Wale, but Bhindre Wale totally refused. He accused the Akali leaders of going soft for their short-term political gain and missed the big picture. By now, tension between the Hindus and the Sikhs had started in adjoining states as well and desecration of religious places were being reported. On 1st of June in 1984, Punjab was put under curfew and communication blockade was established. On the same day, Indira Gandhi appeared on television and radio and said that she was willing to talk to the extremists who had Golden Temple in their control. But side by side, the army and the paramilitary took over. All reporters were asked to leave Amritsar and now Operation Blue Star was set into motion. On 3rd of June 1984, that is on the anniversary of the martyrdom of Guru Arjan Dev, the army blockade of Golden Temple and requested the visitors to come out. Major General Kuldeep Singh Barar was leading this operation. Pilgrims were not allowed to leave the premises of the temple by Bhindrewale followers as they had planned to use them as human shields if needed. Bhindrewale, on the other hand, was getting help from Major General Shahbek Singh, the 1971 war veteran who was instrumental in training Mukti Vahini forces of Bangladesh. He was unceremoniously sacked from his post just one day before his retirement on corruption charges and wanted to take revenge for the insult. He became the military advisor of Bhindre Wale and trained his men and had helped his militants fortify Golden Temple during this operation. The armed forces who thought that they were simply dealing with a ragtag band of extremists were in for a great shock. On the evening of 5th of June, a heavy fighting began and the army took heavy casualties as they had grossly underestimated the firepower and tactics of the militants who were trained by Major General Sahabek Singh. The militants inside the temple had anti-tank guns, machine guns and had positioned snipers across the complex. They were fighting like battle-hardened troops and the army had to pay dearly for their underestimation of the militants. To counter this array of weapons, Major General Kuldeep Singh Barar had to take an important decision. The decision was to bring in the tanks. On 6th of June, tanks were called in and they began shelling near the Akal Takht. Bhindrewale died in the fight, but there was heavy damage to the Akal Takht and to the compound. Walls were littered with bullets, sharpness and explosives from the guns and the tanks. Now, according to the official estimate, 500 militants were killed while the army suffered a total casualty of 83. This was the end of the first phase of Operation Blue Star, that is Operation Metal. After this, Operation Shock was carried out across Punjab to ensure that all suspects were captured or killed. Now, although the military objective was achieved, but the repercussions of this military engagement were huge and the fallout was deadly. 
This operation bore the seeds of alienation in Sikhs against Indira Gandhi and she was assassinated by her two Sikh bodyguards just few months after this, that is on 31st of October in 1984. Her assassination led to a chain of anti-Sikh riots in several parts of the country in which Delhi was the most affected. Around 3,000 Sikhs were brutally killed in Delhi alone. The fallout did not stop there. In 1985, militants with the affiliation to Khalistan movement placed a bomb inside the Delhi-bound Air India flight Kanishka that killed 329 passengers, majority of whom were Hindus. This was considered the largest terrorist aerial attack before 9-11. General A.S. Vedya, the army chief during Operation Blue Star, was also assassinated in 1986. In 2012, an attack was made in London on Major General Kuldeep Singh Bharat, who had led the Operation Blue Star on the ground. But the Khalistan moment did not end with Operation Blue Star. Other leaders, although not in the charismatic way as Bindrewale, took over the baton and moved forward. Most of the people perhaps don't know that the Khalistani terrorists took control of the Golden Temple again in 1986 and in 1988. Operation Black Thunder 1 was launched in 1986 and Operation Black Thunder 2 was launched in 1988 to free the temple from the militants' control. But this time, it was different from an operational standpoint. The command was given to the Punjab police and the NSG and media was given complete access to these operations. IPS officer KPS Gill rose to prominence after this and so did Julio Ribeiro. It was during Operation Black Thunder 2 in 1988 that the story of our current NSA Ajit Doval impersonating as an ISI agent taking the Khalistanis in his confidence and passing on crucial information regarding the numbers and the positions of the terrorists inside the Golden Temple has now acquired a cult status. This is a past that has still not been buried, whose aftermath continues to linger on. The wounds have not yet been healed, and perhaps they never will. Thanks for watching this video, and if you like this kind of content, please do subscribe to One India News YouTube channel and also hit the bell icon to get notification for our latest videos.